Well, as a young sailor, I served on the submarine at USS Tunney, and it was the LPS 282, and you notice this one is the 383. So my submarine was made two years before this one. This is the Fairwater Plains. Okay, and they fold down like fins. And behind there, there are holes in the, in the hole to make it like a ladder. So the other thing we would do after we'd been in the war zone for a week or so, because we couldn't take showers, is they would we would be on the surface and they would lower those down. You can see they're about a foot and a half above the water. Well, we'd actually be a little bit lower. So we'd get out in the water and then get up on those with saltwater soap and soap all up. Of course, we'd be start naked. Yeah. <laughs> soap all up, then you swim back in the water to uh, rinse off, then you crawl back up and uh -huh. go in. So that was always a big treat. See where the upper part of that sail is? Well, ours had a bridge about that high, and then it went up taller. And, and so you'd have a, a watch on each side standing up, then you had the uh, officer. Well, I was up on watch. And, and there was a big, great big storm. We're, we're going up to Hong Kong, and it was at night, we're in the storm. And there's a tank up here, when it, when it comes out of the water and then bounces back down, it makes a boom. And we would know to brace ourselves because the water was going to come up underneath. And uh, we kind of enjoyed that because it warmed us up for a while. So we heard this boom, and I'm down there, and I'm holding in, and the water washes up over us. And before I got up, I heard this, this, the loudest boom I'd ever heard. And so I'm holding on, and as the water come up, it shot me out. And, and I was holding on so tight, it tore the skin off my, my thumbs. But it washed me over the side. But luckily, just before that, Chief Thompson had brought up these harnesses for us. He said, I don't want to wear that stupid thing. What do you think, I'm a girl? He says, you put it on now. He made all of us harness ourselves in. And five minutes later, I was wow. washed over the side, so they were, they, they were able to pull me back. And that's the only time I ever saw those, those harnesses again. We never used them. That's one of the times I count myself as, you know, the good Lord spared my life. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go down in the torpedo room first, the after torpedo room. On the submarine I was served on, the torpedo room was gone because they took that off to make up for weight for the uh, missile hangar that we had back here. This is actually an escape trunk. Uh, the sleeve would come down about here, and then they would flood this compartment with water until it was up over the top of this ring, and then the hatch would be open, and then you'd get under here and then take off, make it to the top. This is how you'd escape out of a sunken submarine. You have four torpedo tubes back here, and there's six up front. This is a signal uh, where you send flares out. You can send flares out of here, or you can send uh, anti-shipping devices. Uh, they just sent up hydrogen bubbles, and so it masks the, the sonar, so it'll bounce off the bubbles and not you. The boat would come up like this, and the screws would come out of the water. They just... Uh -huh. it, was just it was a terrible night. I had all, that was a night I had the dream that the submarine sank and turned upside down. Okay. Would you please push around? Is that what your toilet looked like? Yes. Really? Huh? And here was the sink. Hmm. This lines up all the electrical current from your generators to the engines. And basically, this is an electric boat. You had, so you had four diesel engines making electricity to run electric mo motors that are two down here. They're right on the shaft. Fairbanks Morse engines. These are railroad diesels. You see it's got run, start, and stop. And so you push it this way, and then it pushes air into the cylinders, and it starts the engine rolling, and you kick in the fuel racks. And so that pulls up the fuel racks so that the injectors can start sucking fuel. And so you start it rolling, kicking the fuel racks as soon as it, you, you, you can hear it at night, then you come back to run, and it cuts the air off. And these two valves open up the air intakes. And so when they dive the boat, you have to hurry and close these or else you suck water down. Hmm. And it's really cool. I did that once. I can't really see where it does it here. But it's unnerving when the water starts coming inside. We had air compressors. 
and and so you'd you'd make your compressed air, and, and you'd have to go down about every half hour and bleed the air off the air compressors, but you couldn't really walk in between them, so you'd have to hang off something like this and reach around and 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 bleed off the stages, and every day again the ship would ro would roll, and so it put me up against it, and when I got out of the I had all kinds of brown scars here from the air compressor burns. Okay, this was our one cruise bathroom. You had those two sinks. And that's where you learn to keep the clean up after yourself because you never lit you never left a dirty sink. And if you can see back there, you can see the shower curtain for the only shower we had. But we used to keep it full of onions and potatoes. How many uh, people fit on a submarine? Well, we had 67 on ours, 65, 67. And then this one down here, you had battery wells under here. This was your after battery well, and you'd go down, and the batteries are under here, and they're three feet long. Yeah, I used to sleep back in that corner. And see those wire runs above there, those pipes? Yeah. Every day again, the cockroaches would fall off on that. Ew. <laughs> we were having a lecture one day, and I was sitting up against this sink. I was sitting here, the XO was right in there. We had a little different. There was the space and coffee pot. And the XO was giving a lecture when we got depth charged. <laughs> Whoa. And so the paint off this wall and the condensation hit the back of my neck. And it felt like that it was the beginning of the wall explosion. So as soon as that happened, as soon as the fourth one went off, it was like boom, 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 boom. Then we all jumped up and ran to our battle stations because we knew what was going to happen next. Well, they'd also put this rubber mesh down and because everything was, was serve family style. So there was a rubber meshing down so your plates wouldn't slide up and down the table. Food was, we got fed well. We had steaks, we had roast beef, we had the only service, the only Navy people that got lobster and shrimp. But, uh, oh, can you imagine how hot yeah. that was? Oh, yeah. For battle, yeah. Why for battle? Uh, so that you could, your, so that your eyes could, could adjust to the outside. Because normally you would be at night operations. During the daytime, you'd hike. And up top is the conning tower. That's where the periscopes were. And and that's where your uh, computer, it was an analog computer, just all wheels for the torpedo solutions. And the helmsman. Well, that's a, that's a way to pump water from tanks. We had different tanks in the boat where you could pump water to, to level it out. So I used to operate that too, and you couldn't see them, so you had to know which valve was which. So when the boss would tell you to pump from forward trim to after trim, you'd open up this one and open up that one. Would you swing on the off on these things at all, or would you just duck and run through? Sometimes. This is the yeoman's office. Yo, man! This is the yeoman. He's like the clerk. Okay. Are these and, officers around? Or and something? this would be the chief's quarters in here for your E7s and above. See, they got their own sink. These battery wells are big enough to okay. open, when they take the batteries out to have classrooms in. Whoa. Wow. Where Josh this is, is the officer's wardroom. This is where they would eat. Oh, okay. They Later. ate the same food we did, but they had stewards who would bring it up to them. This is the forward torpedo room. These decks would all come out because you can see that you got, the two, two, you got two more torpedo tubes below them. The main deck level in here. Well, you see how this chute lines up? Uh -huh. And then you've got, they don't have one on, you've got a, a harness that would go in the back, and then you've got pulleys. So you just slide them in. When we were working in the war zone, you may work 20 hours a day. And when you couldn't stand up anymore, then they'd send you up for a little sleep and cut you back. This is the escape trunk. And ours was a little bigger because we could escape out three divers with bottles to do our reconnaissance work. We're basically a reconnaissance submarine. Cool. It's been a long time.